and this microphone was manufactured for a purpose. The day someone takes this microphone and begins to use it to bang the floor, you know that that person don't understand purpose. Joseph didn't send himself, he didn't send himself to Egypt, but by default, he found himself in Egypt. And sometimes in life, we even find ourselves in some situations that we can't even explain, we can't even, but God has a purpose. If Joseph failed in managing the house of Potiphar's economy, you will never have managed Egypt's economy. Sometimes to go to a higher position, go with place in our hands what looks insignificant. You may be doing a job today that looks insignificant, but out of that so-called unimportant job, significance will show forth. Every child of God, God has a purpose for your life. And ours is not only to make a discovery of that purpose, but to align ourselves with that purpose. Help me find a way. Bring me back to you. share what I've titled understanding your strategic position for God's purpose. Say with me understanding your strategic position for God's purpose. And the scripture reading will be Genesis 45 from verse 1 from verse 4 to verse 5. Genesis chapter 45 from verse 4 to verse 5. Shall we all read together? Go on. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. When I read that verse of scripture, I put in brackets there, God positioned me to preserve life. It's a wonderful thing to know that your God, my God, our God is a God of purpose. It means he's a God of purpose. One more time. And God has purpose for everything or everyone he created. God has purpose. God has purpose. The, the scripture we looked at, uh, I think it was mentioned last uh, Friday, from that Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans 8, 28 says, uh, And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Say, according to his purpose. And I like that. His purpose. People have their own purpose. Manufacturers have their purpose for different. But God has a purpose. Touch yourself. God has a purpose for my life. It's so important. The manufacturer that manufactured these microphone, they had a purpose. And this microphone was manufactured for a purpose. The day someone takes this microphone and begins to use it to bang the floor, you know that that person don't understand purpose. Amen. Everything was created or manufactured for a purpose. But most importantly, every child of God, God has a purpose for your life. And that's the reason why nobody has your thumbprint. Do you know that? In the midst of all the millions of people all over the earth today, no, even twins don't have the same thumbprint. You will have thought because they are twins, they were, no. The DNA of everyone is unique to you. And that speaks volume, that there is a purpose. The word purpose suggests a deliberate plan, a proposition, an advanced plan, an intention, or a design. A design. From the scripture we read, Joseph was trying to tell his brother, Despite everything you guys did to me, God did position me for a purpose. Joseph didn't send himself, he didn't send himself to Egypt, 
But by default, he found himself in Egypt. And sometimes in life, we even find ourselves in some situations that we can't even explain. We can't even. But God has a purpose. And ours is not only to make a discovery of that purpose, but to align ourselves with that purpose. I put here, Joseph allowed God to strategically position him. Despite all the contrary experiences he had. He had a contrary experience when he was thrown into the pit. Say the pit. In the Potiphar's house. In the prison. And ultimately in the palace. If someone told him that, you know, Mr. Joseph, this pit you are in today will one day land you in the prison. In the prison. He would say, that's from fry pan to fire. And sometimes when you expect things to you, to get better, it seems as, as though it's not getting better. But keep your eyes on him. Because ultimately, God's purpose for him was that one day he will be in the palace to be at the harem of making decisions that will not only bless Egypt, but bless his entire household. God's purpose and plan will prosper in your lives. I put here, Joseph was positioned to preserve the life of of the Egyptians and uh, the Israelites during the famine. Look back at that scripture again. In that uh, Genesis uh, 45 we looked at. He says, uh, and Joseph said to his brothers, go on everybody, come, come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Uh -huh. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Wow. God sent me ahead before you to preserve life. Me through you, may life be preserved. The question is this. Do you know the purpose of of your current position? Do you know the purpose of your current position in your family? In your church? In your community? Even at work? A lot was said on Friday. The places we walk, we're not just there because we're there to earn salary. Because really and truly, what we earn from our place of work doesn't take care of all our needs. It's just a platform for which God gives us seed. That's why the scripture did not say your salary will supply all your needs. But my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I'm always amazed how sometimes as parents when at the initial stage you get married and uh, you're just trying to find your feet and suddenly a child comes in and you have to start looking after that child. And then oftentimes we say, you know what, we have to make sure that things are in place before another child. And before you know it, another child comes in. And the child comes in. And you see how you go from one child to another and God just takes care of the needs because God never gives a vision without provision. You will never lack for provision. I like that word, provision. So which means before God gave the child, God made provision. And oftentimes the provision he makes, he never shows it to you until you step out. Abraham did not see that there was a ram waiting for him. When God told him, go and offer your own son. But there was a ram already waiting for him. I prophesy over your life. God has taken care of your needs before they show up. May grace and faith rise in your heart. In the name of Jesus. And that's exactly what Mordecai was trying to do. To remind Esther the purpose of our position. We are never in any position all for ourselves. We're never. 
God never calls us into any position all for ourselves. It's for his own purpose. I'm promoted. What's the purpose? So I can have more money? No, no, no. Bigger than that. God's purpose is always bigger than ours. So Mordecai had to remind him. Thank God for people that will always call our attention so that we are reminded of purpose because we can easily forget. In the song I, I wrote in the praise and worship song we did a couple of years ago, I sang that song. Never let me forget it's you. Never let me forget it's you. Why? Because we can easily forget. It's easy to call on God, God, promote me to a new position. Make me the president of my nation. Make me this. But after God has made us what we ask him in line with his purpose, and people break what God made, may we never break God's purpose. Look at what Mordecai said to Esther. In Esther chapter 4, verse 12 to verse 14, Go on, everybody. So they told Mordecai Esther's word. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Read, everybody. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows why God has put you in that position? Who knows? Why God allowed you to relocate? Who knows? We have our own plans in some steps we take, but God has a bigger plan that soft, oftentimes we can't phantom except he gives us that understanding. In this season, may we know that purpose. My heart goes to, to, for, to Vashti. Vashti was the queen before Esther came on. Vashti lost sight of the purpose for which she was there. And she lost her position. You will never lose your position. What made Vashti lose her position? Pride. The king wanted her to come and display the glory that was on her to others around him. The king wanted her to come so that she can make him look good before the people. But she said no. And someone else was called upon to take her place. Because what we fail to use, we lose. May we not lose our position. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I put here. We need to be reminded of the factors that positions us for God's purpose. Because it's one thing for God to have a purpose for our lives or whatever he's called us to do. But there are certain factors that now position us for purpose. And few of them you will find in Psalm 15 from verse 1 to verse 3. In Psalm 15 from verse 1 to verse 3. Let's open our Bible to that quickly. Read everybody. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and walks righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friends. I like that. Who may abide in your tabernacle, or who may, ab or who may abide in your purpose, or in your presence? Three key things or four key things there. Number one, you must know the current state of the work of your hand. You must come to have an awareness of the current state of what. Because if you don't know where you are, you probably don't know where you're going. So you must know, I put here, the current state of the work of your hands. Moses was going to be sent to, to Pharaoh. 
to go and pave way for the people's deliverance. And he was giving God all kinds of excuses. But God said to him, Moses, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? Sometimes what is in our hand does not look significant. Because sometimes to go to a higher position, go with place in our hands what looks insignificant. You may be doing a job today that looks insignificant. But out of that so-called unimportant job, significance will show forth. Who would have thought that the service Joseph was rendering in the house of Potiphar was preparing him to become the second in command in all of Egypt. If Joseph failed in managing the house of Potiphar's economy, he would never have managed Egypt's economy. That's why God will always test us on the way to being promoted. No one gets promoted without being tested. My heart goes to people today who'd, who want to avoid being tested, even in the educational system, and they want to bribe their way to get certificates. Well, you can't bribe your way in your performance. It will show. Tell your neighbor, go through the, go through the training. Go through the Hallelujah. Because to reign, you train. If you want to reign, you are, you train. The second thing, factor that positions you for God's purpose is the purity of your heart. Say purity of heart. You must maintain it. David was not a perfect person, but God saw his heart. He saw his heart. He said, he's a man after my own heart. And that's the reason why, even when you go through what looks like challenging times, don't let anything mess your heart up with regards to your love for God, your fear of God. This other factor is the state of your soul. What is your soul? Your thinking, your emotions. You must take care of your soul. In a world today when people are going through what look like mental breakdown because they don't take care of their soul. They allow the overwhelming pressure of life to get them to that place wherein they make wrong decisions. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. And last but not the least, with regards to the factor that positions you for God's purpose is the words of your mouth. Say the words of my mouth. When you are on the pressure, on your way to fulfilling God's purpose, keep speaking the word of God. Don't say anything contrary to God's word or God's will for your life. Because by your word, you'll be justified. And by your word, you will be condemned. Never say we will never be able to meet needs. Needs will not be able to be met in this house because you can't rob two coins. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say I'm poor. Don't say that. God say, let the, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Don't say what God has not spoken. Don't say I am sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. I am healed. Even when I feel the pain. May you always speak the end results. And may you always experience the end results. I put here, purity of heart is to have one thought that focuses on God in everything you do. That's the purity of heart. Purity of heart doesn't mean that you get to that place wherein you cannot in any way do what is wrong. But even when you do support what is wrong, your heart is still focused on, I want the will of God. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, you know, is... Uh, Psalm 27 verse 4, which ties very much in to this aspect of the purity of heart. Let's read that Psalm 27 verse 4 together. Go on. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold this beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his purpose. Glory to God. In the temple. To inquire in his temple. One thing 
I have desired. You don't desire silver. You don't desire gold. But I, want, I desire to be in the will of God. You know one thing I found out? When you are in the will of God, all the things you need will meet you there. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added. Stop seeking other things. Seek God and all other things will be added to you. What does it mean to seek God? Whatever you are doing, you ask yourself, where is God in this? Where is God in this? Even if you have a project to do, even if you have a ministry that God called, where is God in this? Because so many people embark in some stuff and you ask them, where is God in this? They said, what has God got to do with this? <laughs> if God has nothing to do with it, it's a waste of time. May God be the center of everything you do. That cuts across everything. I always encourage uh, young couples, for example, when they get married and they, they have a delay in, um, in conception. I said, take the pressure of you about I want a child, I want a child. Let that pressure be lifted off you. Your focus is, I want a child that God has proposed to send to this earth through me. That's all. Because we never own a child. God has a purpose for every child, but he's looking for someone whose heart will be, God, let it be in line with your purpose. Oh, give me a child so that everybody will know also I'm able to conceive. That's not, that's not purpose. May God be in your purpose. The first challenge I want to leave with you this afternoon is this. Let an attitude of praise position you to continue to practice God's presence. Let the, word, the attitude of praise continue to, to position you to practice God's presence. Let's say it again. Say it with me. Let an attitude of praise position me to continue to practice God's presence. Hallelujah. We have the tendency to complain and murmur and murmur about everything every day. But when you are in that position of praise unto God. It is when you get to the point people look at you and say, don't you have a problem always happy and joyful? And you say, I don't have a problem. I do face problem, but I don't have a problem. Say, so, I don't have a problem. I may face problems, but I don't have a problem. Because whatever a man says he has, he has. I don't have it. I don't have it. And the second child I want to leave with you this afternoon is, uh, be constantly positioned for the rapture. Be constantly positioned for the rapture. We are not among those who are afraid of Antichrist. Antichrist can't even show up yet until the saints have been raptured. What did I say? So we are not looking out for Antichrist. We are looking unto Christ. In the, in the calendar of God right now, the church is getting closer to the time of rapture. It's after the rapture that there will be seven years of tribulation. And for the saints who know God, who know Christ, they will not be around during tribulation. So right now, every believer, in the midst of everything we are pursuing, in everything we are doing, we must be mindful of the rapture. For the saints who have gone to be with the Lord, they are not dead. They are only sleeping. But there is a day coming when he, Jesus, will not touch the earth, will just be in the air and with a trumpet will call for his saints, those who sleep, and those who are alive, it will be in the twinkling of an eye. Split second. 
Not everybody will hear that sound except those whose spirits are already connected with him. So which means that in the purpose and the plan of God for your life and my life is that after all is said and done, we started in him, we must finish in him. Any life that fails to finish in Christ is a failure. Praise the Lord. What a great joy to bring you this message today. I trust that God spoke to your heart and I believe that the word of God you've heard will profit you, will prosper you, and will perfect all that can sense you in Jesus' name. For those who have not given their heart to Jesus, I want to challenge you to open the door of your heart to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior by praying this simple prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am, a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me now. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. I believe in my heart that you died for my sin. You were buried. But on the third day, God raised you up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as that prayer may sound, if you pray it from your heart, guess what? God heard you and you are saved. So I rejoice with you for this new beginning. I want to encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church where you can be nurtured and you can be helped in your work with God. If there's any way I can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to write me or contact the number on the screen and it will be my pleasure to respond to you. Well, until next time when I come into your home, you keep on winning because God is on your side. You are destined to 